Hello, everyone, and welcome to another uh, continuation of the How Do I Record an Audition video series. So um, in this uh, series, we've talked about USB microphones. We've talked about these um, nicer microphones. We're going to get into more what goes into recording with the nicer microphone like I'm doing right now in this uh, portion of the video. So um, one of the first things that we need to consider is an audio interface if we want to uh, record with an XLR based microphone. So an audio interface is an analog to digital converter um, that employs preamps to convert the sound that you receive from the microphone, magnify it to a level it can be accurately sampled, and then um, turn that into digital information. Now the advantage is that you can use almost any microphone in the professional arsenal with an audio interface. Also, you're probably going to get the highest quality results because these are devices that are dedicated to making the best transition from analog audio to digital audio. The disadvantage is that if you're doing this, there's a lot more setup, um, there's some more software to go in, and there's going to be increased price because you're buying a nice microphone and an audio interface. So um, as we move forward, um, there are several different types of things that you need to consider um, when buying an audio interface. Um, you're probably starting at about $150, and for $150, you'll be able to get something like this PreSonus i2. Now, the PreSonus i2 um, is also a MIDI interface on the back. Here's your USB connection, and you can connect a pair of speakers. Um, with that as well. On the front, you'll see that it has two um, XLR slots. They are combo jacks, so if you're an electric guitar player, you can go right down the center, or you can put your XLR around the outside edge. You get um, gain knobs here and here, which allow you to control the sensitivity of the microphone. Um, this does come with phantom power, which is this 48V button. We're gonna talk a little bit more about why you need that later. So you can power condenser microphones. It has um, headphone and volume control here as well. So that's the budget level um, I2 by PreSonus. You can also get the Focusrite Scarlet 2 I2, which you saw in the previous version. Um, this does not require power, whereas the Audient ID14 is a step up. You can tell when you pick up this device that it is a significantly uh, heftier piece of equipment. This is twice as expensive. It is a $300 piece of equipment. Um, here you have two XLR jacks comboed with the electric guitar line or mono TR cable going right down the center. Um, you do have the outputs again for the um, speaker controls and your um, USB is here and your power supply goes here. Um, when you look on the front, you have a uh, speaker control and headphone control on this side. You just press the button and then move the dial appropriately. Um, your gain settings are available um, here and here, channel one, channel two, and then you have separate controls for phantom power with each one of these little toggle switches right here and that turns the 48 volt phantom power on. Um, the preamps here are a little bit nicer. They give a little bit quieter signal and um, a cool thing about this is it also has, if you're an electric guitar player, a high impedance electric guitar line on the front, which is a little bit different than this jack if you know about it, but it's a little bit clearer sound when you want to power your guitars the right way. Um, so that would be this mid-level. Um, there is a higher software requirement for one of these that's in the mid-level. Um, the advantage uh, to this and the SSL2 um, is their higher quality preamps and way better analog to digital conversion. So as you increase in price, you're getting a better product here. The top quality product here is the Apollo Twin Duo. Um, I know that most of you are going to not go into this price range because it is rather expensive, but I do want you to see what is out there. So for $900, you can get the Apollo Twin Duo. It does need electricity. This is the highest quality everything in a two-channel um, audio interface. And the cool thing is it does onboard effects processing, which is just 
totally awesome. If you really want to create the sound of a vintage piece of recording equipment, the Apollo Twin Duo is the way to go. The disadvantage is that this is often way too much software for you to consider um, using and processing as if you're not familiar with this kind of technology. So it's something that you definitely, definitely, definitely want to consider. Um, it's not getting something that's past your needs or what you can be effective. I think uh, either the budget or the mid-level option here will be good for making a standard audition video. Um, as you begin to think about microphones and which microphone um, you want to attach to your audio interface, I think there are two main schools of thought here. Um, again, one of those is a dynamic microphone, which would look something like this. Um, this is a Shure SM57. It is a very standard microphone. It's actually really good for instruments. Um, these microphones tend to be a little bit cheaper. They tend to be more rugged. Matter of fact, I've seen someone nail in a nail to a wall and then turn around and use their SM57. They're that rugged. I don't recommend that you try that at home. I'm not going to be held accountable for any microphones that you nail nails into the wall with. But um, if, if you're doing a live application or want a good affordable way. These are rugged microphones, so if you're a teacher and you're checking it out to a student, uh, you may really want to consider this because if it hits the ground, it's probably still going to be okay. Um, it's also less affected by a poor recording environment. Um, because these microphones are a little bit less sensitive than their condenser counterparts, um, it tends to mean that you can um, record in a less acoustically treated space and still get a good recording, which may be very appealing to some of you. This Shure uh, SM7 is also a nice dynamic microphone. Um, the cons here is that a dynamic microphone doesn't actually capture the full frequency of human hearing. So um, the lowest frequencies and the highest frequencies will not be captured at an even level with um, across the whole frequency spectrum. So from maybe 50 hertz down, you're going to have a little bit of a roll off with a dynamic mic. And from about 15,000 hertz up, you're going to have a little bit of attenuation with a dynamic microphone, which may be uh, appealing depending on what kind of instrument you are recording. Um, a condenser mic, we are probably all kind of familiar with the good old condenser mic look. We've seen these in professional studios all over um, the world. And this is uh, an S, both of these are SE brand, which are very good uh, budget brand microphones for sure. The quality that you get for the price is very, very good with these two microphones. Um, this is a large diaphragm condenser, meaning the area that the actually accepts the sound is very large, whereas this is a small diaphragm here. This uh, is where the sound is uh, accepted here. This is about the size of a dime and this is about the size of a 50 cent piece. They have two different um, purposes in recording. Uh, you would want to use a large diaphragm mic if you're going with a vocal option, because a small diaphragm will react much faster to your P's and your uh, M's and N's and anything that has a pop or a plosive that goes with it. Uh, those will be affected a lot more than these, and you can get the shields for these as well to even help improve with that. Um, even more. So those are the condensers. Their advantage is they're more detailed in sound. They have increased clarity um, and warmth. They do accept sound across the full frequency range of human hearing. So um, as you uh, go across the full frequency range, the low frequencies all the way to the high frequencies are accepted um, at roughly an equal level. Um, the cons is they're often more expensive. They are by far more delicate. If you drop one of these or a student drops one of these, um, it's probably done. The, the fall will definitely affect the microphone because the plate inside the microphone is a very thin piece of gold or other flexible material that's, uh, or metal, I should say. Um, so just be aware that they are more delicate. 
And because they are more sensitive to sound pickup, they can be influenced by the environment that you are recording in. Now, they often come in what we call a spider mount, which is actually this uh, elasticy thing. This keeps it from picking up people walking on the floor or stuff that could be uh, emanating through hard surfaces through the mic stand. Um, it suspends the microphone so that you don't get those vibrations into the microphone. But know that... Um, a concrete box of a recording um, practice room at your school. Um, this is probably not a good option for that because all the sound that's bouncing around in the room is going to most likely be picked up by this and uh, make a less good recording. So um, be aware of that as you um, select what microphone um, you're moving into. So uh, in the next couple uh, videos, we're going to go into uh, more details about each of the two types of microphones and uh, mics that you might buy in those categories. So if you found this helpful, hit the thumbs up or subscribe below.